Hey guys, welcome back. Paul Casper here, and um, today's lesson I just want to give a brief overview of the timeline. In the last lesson, we actually used the timeline quite a bit, and we created new layers for our fish animation, and we also created folders or layer groups within the timeline. There's also a few other things we can do in here because, as I said before, the timeline is the heart and soul of, of Flash. It's really where we control our animations and make things happen. The first thing I want to show you when it comes to the timeline here, beyond layering and folders, is if you go to the upper right hand corner here of the panel, you can actually change the preview size of these little boxes which are known as frames. So again, flash is measured in frames per second. So when we create our illustrations and our animations, we are going to measure them in frames. We are going to do a lot of clicking of these little frames. And sometimes it's a little bit hard to get them um, to actually grab the frame itself. So by clicking down over here, we can actually change the preview size of the clickable area of these frames. So by default, it's going to be normal. You can bump it up to medium. And now notice how our size enlarged here a little bit. A little bit easier to click and especially right click on because we get all kinds of fun options when you right click on our frames. If you wanted to, you could even go up to large, which gets bigger, and preview. When you go into the preview, you can actually see the artwork on each frame as it shows up over time. I'm going to just go right back down to the medium make it easier for you guys to see and also easier to click. So there you go as far as previewing the timeline. Of course you can scrub across with this little scroll bar if you happen to have a long animation. I've got a few things set up here just very basic to give us a little bit to work with. Again flash is measured in frames per second so we've got a little frames per second indicator here if you wanted to change the frames per second, say from 24 to 12 to lower your file size, you can change it like that. I'm going to keep it at 24. Type it in. Also notice that there's a little number one here. The number one actually indicates what keyframe that we're actually seeing right now. So if I took this little red box, this current time indicator, and scrubbed it across, notice how that number changes. So that number indicates where we currently are in the timeline. If we wanted to make a change, say, on frame 10, instead of scrubbing to frame 10, we could also just click, select that text, type the number into that box, hit return, and we automatically, our current time indicator is automatically brought to frame 10. Also notice there's the point 0.4 seconds right now. This tells you how long your animation is. So as I scrub across, in a half of a second, this is what the user is going to see. In two tenths of a second, this is what they're going to see. So uh, what I have set up here is actually extremely fast. You're going to space out your animations a little bit more here. So that's a um, couple of things there. I want to also show you this little button down here on the left called onion skinning. When you onion skin something, we're going to use this in animation because you can click that button. And when you click that, you can see the before frame and the after frame of the current frame you're with. So as you move your scrubber, notice that the onion skin thing um, preview at the top here moves with it. So you are, we're always going to see two frames before and two frames after in this instance. If we only wanted to see one before and one after, we could actually shrink that up. And now we've got a little bit of a tighter preview. Or there, we've got the actual frames as well. So usually with onion skinning, it kind of helps us with our placement, and we're going to get into frame-based animation next. So we can maybe use that to help us make accurate animations. Turn that on and off again, just by clicking that button. I'm going to turn it off for now, and go back to the beginning. There's a little button here, loop. If you want to just preview a little piece of your animation instead of the whole thing. If you click the loop button, you also get a little preview here where you can decide, okay, when I look at my stuff, I just want to preview this many frames. 
So you can actually set up your loops. You can watch one piece over and over. So when you then move over to the left here and click play, it starts and finishes at the exact spot. You can also hit the enter key on your keyboard if you're using a Mac. Good stuff. There we go. So maybe we loop over here. All right. Also, notice so obviously we hit the play button. We just played and paused our animation. Play. And notice mine keeps going. So that's a way to preview it. You can go back to the beginning by hitting the left one, go to the end by hitting the last frame. Back and forth, you can go back and forth by one as well. So there's just a little bit about the timeline and we can't really um, learn much about the timeline without learning about these things here at the top. And these are called frames, blank keyframes, keyframes, frame spans, frame spans with art, and we've also got a lot more we're going to see. Um, one thing I do want to show you before we start that next piece of the lesson where we talk about frames and keyframes is I just want to show you a few different previews of different types of things you will probably see out on the timeline here throughout the semester and your work um, outside of it on your own projects. So we've got all kinds of different things we're going to be doing and learning about the timeline, and the base of that is your keyframes, which is coming up next. Thanks a lot, and I hope you've got a good base of the timeline.